Hey guys, I'm working on this TR6 transmission here, Triumph TR6, and I'm replacing the main shaft. And since I have it taken apart, I thought this is a good opportunity to show you how this transmission actually works. I know that probably most of you know, but I'm sure that there are some people who are not really familiar. So let's see how this works. So first of all, let's see what the components are here. We have our main shaft on which we have all the gears for first, second, third, and actually we have first, second, and third only on the main shaft. So just for training purposes, I'll show you that this, these are two separate shafts here. This is not one continuous shaft. So if we put it together, now you know that we have a split here. So this one, can spin independently from this one. I can spin one in one direction, the other one in the other direction. So the two are not connected. So this is our input shaft because it's constantly connected to the clutch disc. And whenever we engage the clutch, the engine starts spinning this shaft as well. But if we are in neutral, it just spins this shaft and nothing transmits to the other end of the transmission. So this is the main shaft from here, which is connected to our drive shaft and to the differential and to the two rear wheels, of course. So whenever this shaft spins, our wheels spin. And depending on how fast this shaft spins, that's also changing the speed of our rear wheels. So how do we transfer the torque from here to here so we can make it spin and we can also make it spin with different speeds. So let's go through the gears here. We have our first gear. This is the biggest gear here with the most teeth on it. And as you can see, it spins freely on the main shaft. We also have our second gear, which is this one. Again, it spins independently on the main shaft. We have our third gear, which is this one. Again, it spins independently on the main shaft. And we don't have a gear for fourth because fourth is direct. So the, this gear though is permanently connected to this. It's, in fact, it's actually one part. This input shaft has this gear at the end of it, but we're gonna come back to this later. So let's start with fourth gear. Fourth is also called a direct gear because whatever input we have here, the same output we have here. How do we achieve that? Well, with our selector ring here. So we have this selector ring and this selector ring. This is the selector ring for fourth and third, and this is the selector ring for first and second gear. So our selector rings can slide back and forth, I'll show you how later, but they are constantly engaged with our output shaft. So I cannot spin them. They have splines inside and you can move them back and forth but you cannot spin them on the main shaft. That's important to know. So let's see how we select fourth gear first, because it is the easiest, because we know that this selector is constantly engaged with the main shaft. So when these teeth here match with the splines that we have inside of this gear, of this ring, we can slide it forward. And now it engages our hub with our input shaft. So now they are no longer independent. Now they are actually connected to each other. So if we spin this one, we spin also the output shaft. So that's our direct gear or as known as Ford gear. So whatever comes in the transmission, it comes out. If the crankshaft spins with 1000 RPM, we have 1000 RPM out of the transmission, 1000 RPM on the drive shaft, 1000 RPM into the differential, and depending on the differential ratio, we have a now different output to the wheels, but that's another story. So that's how we engage fourth. But how do we do third, second, and first? Well, first of all, we have to come back to neutral. Now they are independent again. Okay, so how do we select, let's say third? You guessed right, we slide it in this direction now, so it can engage with the third gear. So now our third gear, you remember the third gear was independent from the output shaft. It was, I was able to spin it freely, but now because it's engaged with the synchro hub here through the ring, and we know that this hub 
and the ring are constantly engaged with, with the main shaft. Now our third gear also is engaged with our main shaft. So if we spin this gear, we're gonna spin also the main shaft. Okay, but how does that help us since our input shaft can spin independently from this one? That's where we introduce our counter shaft. So this is our counter shaft and on it we have gears as well. This shaft, even though it is created by separate gears, all these are separate gears, it is one solid piece. The whole shaft spins on its spindle, but each and every gear here is constantly engaged with all the other ones. Now all these gears, each and every one engages with one of these. This engages with first, this engages with second, this engages with third, and this engages with the input shaft. Here, these are not engaged. I wanna show you that. So here we have space. These are not engaged. These are for reverse, and we're gonna talk about them later. So now we selected here our third, like we said. So we know that our third gear is constantly engaged with our output shaft. The rest are spinning freely. Now, what happens if we spin our input shaft? Our input shaft spins together with this gear because this gear is part of it. Since this is engaged constantly, it's gonna spin constantly as well. And since all these gears are also engaged with something, they're also gonna spin them constantly. But remember, this one is spinning freely on the shaft. So even if this entire shaft is spinning, this gear is spinning, it's not gonna transfer the power to go that direction. It's just gonna spin this gear freely on the shaft. Here too, this is gonna spin, it's gonna spin the second gear as well, but nothing is gonna happen because it's just gonna spin the gear. It's not gonna spin the shaft. However, because now our third gear is engaged to the output shaft through the hub, the power is gonna come through here, it's gonna be transmitted to here, it's gonna be transmitted to here, and it's gonna be transmitted to here, and because this is engaged with the output shaft, now our output shaft is gonna spin. And because this gear has a little bit more teeth than this one, it's gonna reduce the speed. The ratio is not gonna be one to one. Now we're gonna spin our output shaft with certain RPM, but this shaft is gonna spin with another different RPM. So that was for third. Well, if we slide this ring back here now we don't have any of these engaged with the output shaft so if we spin the input shaft our counter shaft is going to spin too all these gears are going to spin too but our output shaft stays stationary you see okay so what happens if we want to select second gear well now we go to our other ring here and we slide this one towards our second which is tricky there you go so now our second gear is engaged with this hub and because this hub is engaged to the output shaft now our second gear is engaged to the output shaft so now when we spin the input shaft that's going to spin also our output shaft because the torque is going to come this way this way this way and it's going to come here and this gear is now spinning the output shaft and because now these these gears have different ratio than these ones. Now our output shaft is going to spin with different RPM. And then for first, it is similar. We go back to neutral. Now we go to first. We slide this. That's tricky. There you go. So now we engaged our first gear with the hub. And the hub is engaged with the output shaft. So whenever this gear spins, also the output shaft spins. So now when we spin our input shaft, it turns all these gears, but they don't do anything because these are not engaged. And this one is connected to the output shaft through the synchro hub. Now we have power going this way. And because these are with different ratio now, the engine is gonna spin fast, but the wheels are gonna spin slow. Do you see how slow our main shaft spins? Let's do second. So now you see our input shaft spins much faster. Then we do neutral and third. Now it spins faster. 
the uh, main shaft and if we do direct now you see now it, it spins much faster so our counter shaft is not doing anything in this moment it just idles okay so that was first second third and fourth how do we do reverse though well for reverse we have these teeth and these teeth here they are like i showed you they are not engaged they don't engage ever direct to each other they use this idle gear which connects them this idle gear normally sits away from them but whenever we want to select the reverse we slide it this way and now these two are engaged but because they are engaged through a third gear now they re reverse the direction here we have to be in neutral of course but now if you look carefully at the output shaft i'm gonna spin this one forward towards you but the out output shaft spins in the other direction because this little idler here reverses the direction so that's everything that's how the transmission works i know that it looks complicated but in fact it's a very simple thing i hope that my explanation is clear enough and I, and i hope that this video was helpful for you Thanks for watching. Bye.